Welcome to the Cloisters on the Platte. This is a video tour of the entire site on today's flyover. We're entering here the property from the south, coming up the main entrance road that you can see under construction. Below us on the left is the foundation for the gatehouse and to the right is the parking garage underground. As we come up the hill, we connect with the main road that you can see that's been excavated, the truck is driving on. Below us is uh, the second of two lakes, the smaller of the two lakes, and ahead of us is the Cloisters Retreat Center, and on the left is the chapel. We're now flying back to the southeast. You can see our utility yard beneath us for all of our water utilities. Below us here is the main lake, the larger of the two lakes, which will be flanked by three lodges. Lodge 5 is under construction below us, the Campion Lodge. There's two other lodges adjacent to it, down the hill here from the chapel. Here's the entrance to the retreat center below us. You can see the entrance portico shear. We're flying over lake number two, the second of two lakes, yet to be named. Here's the work on the chapel. Chapel is a beautiful ashlar pattern limestone from Indiana. The inspiration for the chapel was St. Margaret Mary's in Omaha, Nebraska. The craftsmanship is uh, quite elaborate. The contractors that we've hired are the best in their craft and trade. All of the blue that you see on the chapel will be covered up. That's all the underlayment to support the roof material and the stone facade. The roof will be a, a solid slate material, very, very beautiful, multicolored. You can see the connector visible there, the walkway between the chapel and the retreat center. The retreat center will house our main reception area, 10 guest rooms, a dining facility, meeting rooms, meditation rooms, and a library. The inspiration for the retreat center was the cloister at Sea Island, Georgia, designed by Peter Capone, an architect from California. The chapel was designed by Leo Daly and Associates, who also did St. Margaret Mary's in Omaha. You see the second floor of the retreat center under construction here. It has a clear story roof with a band of glass all the way around the top, providing a lot of natural light to the entire facility. This end here is the dining room. You can see the wood framing taking place for the roof. There's an outdoor terrace to dine on in fair weather. You can see the structural framing for that. There's two fireplaces that flank the dining room. Beautiful, warm, inviting environment. We're looking here to the west. This is the Campion Lodge under construction by Big D signature. They're the contractor building it. The three lodges on the west have been designed by JLF and Associates. All the lodges are named after Jesuits who were persecuted and martyred for their faith. Now we're flying over to the east side of the site. This is the lodge in the north, most northeast corner of the, of the facility. This lodge was designed by Jonathan Foote. This lodge, like all the others, there's seven total lodges with ten guest rooms each. They're all very unique in design, structure, finishes, materials, all to give the guests a very unique experience wherever they stay. This is the second lodge on the east. This is designed by Platt Architects out of Brevard, North Carolina. And this is the first lodge that you would see on the southeast. This is designed by Lakadian Associates. Tucked and nestled into the trees. This will have a beautiful water feature around it as well. We're flying south here. You can see the first station plaza for the Stations of the Cross walk. These are designed by a consortium of world-class sculptors. There will be a total of the traditional 14 stations. The path length is the same length as Christ walked in Jerusalem, also known as the Via Dolorosa. It's roughly 2,500 feet long. 
to cover all 14 stations. There's a 140-foot pedestrian bridge beneath us in the trees between stations 6 and 7. As we fly further east, you can see the stations in the open. These stations would conclude the walk, stations 9 through 14. Below us we see 9 to the right, 10 in the middle, 11 coming into view. 12 has the three squares on it, representing the three crosses at the crucifixion with Christ. And you can see the construction on the tomb. The tomb has a very elaborate and very authentic looking wall that faces the tomb. We're now seeing the parking garage. It's an underground parking facility flanked by some very beautiful limestone ledge rock retaining walls that are indigenous to the site. Limestone is found naturally on the site. The capacity of the garage is 80 vehicles. You can see the egress pathways as well as the entrance for automobile traffic. The guests will park in the parking garage and take shuttles up to the facility. Now you can see to the right, very visible, the facade wall for the tomb, which is station 14. Again, very authentic. The whole goal was to make it as authentic as possible and make it reflect what the walls in Jerusalem looked like at that time of Christ. Below us is further grading for the second of our two lakes and the dam to support the lake. We hope you've enjoyed this video flyover of the Cloisters on the Platte. For future updates and further information, please visit us at thecloistersontheplat.com.